Hello, my name is David McHenry. I am the Engineering and Technical Manager here at RegoFix USA. Today on Tech Chat, I want to talk about nut torque values and why they are important. So let me grab some tools and let's get started. Okay, so before we get into the actual nut torque values, let's talk about the collets for just a few moments. There are two types of collet designs that we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about what's called a through bore collet, and that's where the collet is the same size in the front, or the collet ID bore is the same size in the front as it is in the back. That bore goes all the way through the length of the collet, and that is called a through bore collet. There's also what's called a counter bore collet where the ID at the top of the collet is different than that in the back. The back of the collet is actually relieved, shortening the bore length of the collet. And this tool will be called a counter bore collet. So going forward, remember those two, two values. And why is that important? Well, a through bore collet allows you to put the stress of the clamping torque throughout the entire length of the collet cavity. A counter bore collet does not. It puts the stress of the nut torque on a much more reduced area. So the amount of torque applied to a through bore or a counter bore can be significantly different. And it should be looked at when you're doing your tool holder assemblies. So let's take a better look. Okay. so. Here I have two ER16 assemblies, one with a quarter inch pin and one with a one eighth inch pin. Quarter inch tool holder here with a collet is a through bore collet and the eighth inch pin is a counter bore collet. In most cases, the operator doing the assembly would simply put his wrench or his torque wrench on and he would tighten these to the same value with very little consideration for what the real torque is. Well, why is that? Up until recently, or up until the invention of the high Q nut or the friction bearing style nuts, you couldn't transmit enough torque into the assembly to make a difference. So it didn't matter if you applied the same torque to the eighth inch as you did the quarter inch, the clamping nuts being used just weren't that efficient. Today, with the high Q nuts and the friction bearing nut styles that are offered, nut torque is a lot more important. The collet is much, much softer than the carbide tool being used, and it's softer than the tool holder body itself. So when the collet is over torqued, you actually deform the material inside the collet and you do damage to that collet, shortening its lifespan and usability. That's why if you look in the back of the RegoFix ER catalog, you will actually find a recommended nut torque chart, very similar to this one. And it gives you the exact specifications that you already use when tightening the collets. To give you a good idea on why I picked two common sizes in a very common ER series, the eighth inch and the quarter inch, let's take a look at our torque chart. So if I follow the torque chart and I look up an eighth inch tool size, it says I should have a recommended tightening torque of 15 foot-pounds. But the quarter inch, which isn't that much bigger, has a recommended tightening torque of 46 foot-pounds, over three times the value of the eighth inch. That counterbore design is what comes into play right here. I am holding much less of the tool shank in the eighth inch than I am the quarter inch, and I'm leaving more room for collet deformation if I over tighten that. So it's very important that your operators be aware that a torque chart exists, where to find that torque chart, and how to use it properly. If you have any questions on ER nut torque, please feel free to contact your RegoFix representative or give us a call here at RegoFix USA. Again, my name is David McHenry. Thank you for joining us.